Welcome back. In this video, we'll be assembling an audio amplifier circuit for the LM383, which is an audio amplifier that comes in this TO220 package. It's five pins, and I've bent these pins so that it'll fit conveniently in a breadboard. This amplifier's got some fairly decent features. It can carry a pretty good bit of current, 3.5 amps, which would I ever push it to the 3.5 amps? Probably not, but that's what its data sheet says that it could at peak surges it could carry that much current. It does have an externally programmable gain, which is kind of nice. You can adjust the gain using a voltage divider setup. It's got a wide supply voltage range, 5 to 20 volts, which is nice, but if you want to get to its upper 7 watt advertised abilities, you'll have to be closer to that 20 volts rather than 5 volts. We'll be using just a 9 volt battery to assemble the circuit and test it. And it, what makes it decent for hooking it to an MP3, MP4 player is that it's basically an operational amplifier and it has an extremely high input impedance which is nice that means it won't pull a lot of current from your I, your mp3 mp4 player that's what you want if you're going to try to hook it to one of the small music players and it has a fairly fairly odd pinout if you're accustomed to thinking of this TO220 package as like a MOSFET or a Darlington style transistor that it has, but it's ultimately just an operational amplifier that it has a non-inverting input on pin 1, it's got an inverting input on pin 2, it's ground for the operational amp inside of it, is the center pin, then the output comes out on pin 4, and the supply voltage, your 5 to 20 volts, attaches to pin 5. And they're in order. Though the pins 2 and 4 are kiltered a little behind pins 1, 3, and 5. And to put it in a breadboard, you have to kind of bend it out to make it work. When you're looking at the data sheet for this particular chip, the main thing to pay attention to is that supply voltage, the range of it, its input resistance or impedance. It's 150 kilo ohms, which is good enough to protect most MP3, MP4 players. And the output power when you use a 4 ohm speaker, I go with the lowest number, that 4.7 watts. That's what most people at the hobbyist level would be put. That's that's the upper tier. We're not going to get anywhere near this today. But it keeps going where it could be the 5.1, 5.5, up to 7 watts. But that's going to only occur if you're pushing it toward that 20 volts, its upper limit. As evidence that we're not going to get um, close to that 7 watt output level is... You can look at this chart, the output power versus the supply voltage. We're just going to use a 9 volt battery, which that's not what you'd want to power this with continuously because it would drain it pretty quickly. You'd be better off with double A's making up to 9 volts or 12 volts. But if you go between your 8 to 10 volt power supply and you draw the line on the chart, you're at that in between the 4 to 5 watt. You're coming out right in the middle somewhere. And that's going to depend too on how loud you play the volume. Given the speaker we're going to use, if I turned it all the way up, it would distort and break the speaker. So we're not going to get anywhere near this. We'll be more around this two and a half, three-ish range during our demonstration. As to the actual schematic we're going to use, is I, it's a basically as close as one could get to this schematic that's on the data sheet. I've redrawn it in two different ways. One way that mirrors this particular orientation and in the more standard op amp configuration diagram. And I've added a 10K potentiometer to be able to adjust the volume and to get any low level distortion out of the audio signal coming in. 
but it'll be basically this schematic that's on the data sheet. And it works fairly well. If one's partial to the operational amplifier schematic with the sideways triangle set up, that shows kind of the input to the output from left to right, you could use this schematic to assemble the circuit we'll be doing during this video. But just to get a sense of how does this amplifier, how does it functionally work, is the audio comes in, sent through a 10K potentiometer, then you have your buffer, a 10 microfarad capacitor, that cuts the DC off and just lets the AC signal flow through. And that goes into your number one pin, your non-inverting input to the op amp. You've got your voltage or your power supply coming in, basically standard configuration for an op amp, but in this case with this TTO, this TO220 package, it's coming in on pin five. And it's bypassed through a 0.2 microfarad capacitor to ground. That stabilizes the voltage line when this amp starts really pulling from that supply. It's ground, it's on pin three, and its output comes out on this line and it enters through this voltage divider set up, feeds through, once again, this capacitor's cutting the gain, or, or it's cutting any DC that's coming out on this line, cuts a DC, and just lets the AC go through, and goes through this capacitor and comes back to the non-inverting input, which this is adjusting your gain. You can, with this configuration, it has about 100 gain. And you can do the math, um, but this configuration is like the data sheet. Then it comes out, this RC network basically just cuts any of the noise that's been amplified through the amp, any noise that came in on this line and passed through the amplifier, this cuts a little bit more of the noise out. Then, and given that I don't have a 2000 microfarad capacitor, now I've just done two 1000 microfarad capacitors in parallel to make 2000 microfarads, and then it goes to our 4 ohm speaker. If you wanted to use this particular diagram to build the circuit, you could, but I found that many people just starting out are better off in assembling the circuit for the first time if they stick closer to what's on the data sheet. Because you can pretty much plug the chip into a breadboard and follow the schematic really closely line by line. And that's what we'll be doing in this video. But either schematic you prefer is fine. This one is functionally, this schematic is functionally identical or hook up identical to this schematic. They're identical. Either one will work. Just if you feel more comfortable following this schematic with the pins kind of out of order, then do so. Or for this video, I'll be following this schematic, which keeps the pins in order, and we'll assemble it in the order of those pins. As to the parts you'll need for this project, you'll need an LM383 audio amplifier. It comes in, like I've mentioned two times, the TO220 package. You'll need eventually a multi-watt heat sink. Now when I put it on the breadboard we're not going to add this but if when you mount it on protoboard you definitely need a heat sink. This little chip does get hot when it's when you start to push it. When you the more volume you add to it the hotter the chip's going to get. The more the higher your voltage supply the hotter the chip's going to get. Then you need some way to dissipate the heat. So a heat sink, you can make your own or you can buy one like this. This is a multi-watt package, meaning it'll dis dissipate. It can handle more than just one watt of power going through it. You'll also need some sort of stereo plug, some way to connect it to your MP3 player. Like here's one, or you could have one of the older, larger style. And what you need is just a stereo plug 
This is a one quarter stereo plug. You could use mono given that the way this is just going to be a single side amp. It's only going to amplify one of the lines I have the left side taped off. You could run the left and the right together. That's possible through some resistors, but we're just going to use the right side for this demonstration. And it's just a one quarter stereo plug. You can pick them up. Radio Shack has them. Or you can get them from some other vendor. But that's all it is, is a one quarter stereo plug. And it's just, it'll just plug into your music player. That's all you need. You could use an extension cable with two stereo plugs and a receiver that you could plug in on the op amp side. Whatever configuration you want. As far as demonstration for a breadboard, I found that this setup works perfectly fine. The next thing you'll need is a 4 ohm speaker or two 8 ohm speakers that you are connecting in parallel. I'm just using this. It's just a 4 ohm 3 watt speaker which is at the lower end of the wattage. That using this with using this particular amplifier with a 9 volt battery and I'm not going to turn the volume up too loud this speaker works but if I crank the volume up it would start to distort and mess the speaker up but this is just a 3 inch 4 ohm 3 watt speaker that's what I'll be using in this demonstration but if you and it will work it would work for a permanent mount but you just want to be aware of the wattage capacity of your speaker if you plan to crank the volume up really really loud you'll start to get distortion through your speaker. But as long as you're just listening to it, sort of normal, sitting around a house or an apartment, not trying to max out what the little amplifier can do, a speaker like this will work perfectly fine with this particular amplifier. And it won't create that much heat on the amplifier either if you don't turn it up wide open. But you could just as well use two 8 ohm speakers connected in parallel which would reduced to a 4 ohm. You can do two 8 ohms in parallel. That's totally possible. Or you can use an 8 ohm and a 4 ohm resistor in parallel, but you'd need a multi-watt resistor and then you're generating a lot of heat. That's really not ideal. And the sound quality would probably start to go down too. But And the thing about it is when you get to your 8 ohm speaker, if you did do it in parallel, you need to pay attention to the wattage. Remember this little thing on a good day with 15, 20 volts going to it could very well get close to that 7 watt output and so you don't want your speakers to be too low of a wattage for it. Or it's just it's going to depend on how loud you play the music. And you'll need a 10k potentiometer. I'm just using this breadboard friendly doesn't mean it works the best in a breadboard, but you can plug it into a breadboard if you push it in there hard enough and it'll stay. That's 10k potentiometer. You'll need some form of power supply. In our case, I'm just going to use a 9 volt battery with a 9 volt battery clip plugged into a breadboard. And to decouple our power supply, I'm going to use a 100 microfarad capacitor. Just in case when the when this amplifier, when we turn the volume up, if we do it a little quickly and it starts to brown out on the power supply, this 100 microfarad capacitor will take up some of the slack. We also need a 10 microfarad capacitor. need a 470 microfarad capacitor. And that 0.2 microfarad capacitor, I'm using these two polyester .22 microfarad capacitors, they work perfectly fine. And one will need, if they do it exactly the way I do it, they'll need two 1000 microfarad capacitors. They do make a 2200 microfarad capacitor which would work and you wouldn't have to put these two in parallel using it. You know, it's readily available at somewhere like Radio Show. Finally, you'll need a 1 to 1 1.5 ohm resistor. I had a 1.5. It works fine. 
a 2 to 2.5 resistor. I had a 2.5. It works fine. This is These two are doing the gain, these bottom two. This one is just a final noise, any transient noise, using this and one of those 0.22 microfarad capacitors. That's what that 1.5 is in line with. It's an RC network. And then you'll need a 220 ohm resistor. Quarter watt is what I'm using, quarter watt resistors. They work perfectly fine. And you'll need a breadboard and some wire. To get started building the circuit, I've just attached the rails of my breadboard. I had one where the bottom rails are separate from the top rails, so I ran these jumpers down. And I've ran the ground rail over so that the ground rail is running out both sides of the breadboard with this wire. And I plugged in the 9 volt battery clip into the power rails on this side. The first thing we'll do is look back at our schematic and notice that on pin 1 we have our audio coming in from our MP3 player and it enters into a 10K potentiometer. So let's set this part of the circuit up first. We need to have the audio end line going into one leg of that potentiometer. The center leg is going to go to the chip through a 10 microfarad capacitor and the third leg of the potentiometer will be at ground. Let's add that to the circuit. 10K potentiometer is first leg, second, third. The first leg is where our audio in will enter. I'm just going to plug it into the breadboard like that. And in order to run the ground line, we'll go ahead Get a piece of wire. Put it in the board. And this will account for, let's just zoom in a little bit so that everyone can see. This will account for the third leg of the potentiometer. Then we'll plug it in. And if you notice, there's the outer leg, that's where our audio in should go. So we'll take this setup, the right line, and there's our audio in going to this side of the potentiometer. The bottom or the third leg of it is going to ground through that wire. And then on our audio in, if you look at the schematic, we have the audio in red going to one side of the potentiometer, the other side of it's grounded, the middle pin we haven't connected yet, and then the other part of the audio in grounds. So we'll take the ground line that's connected to this one quarter stereo jack, plug it into the ground rail. And we can zoom out. And that's the overall setup. This will eventually plug into our MP3 player. Now to deal with the center leg of that potentiometer, the center one right there, we need to add a piece of wire so that we can add in our 10 microfarad capacitor to go to the first leg of the audio amplifier. It's just a piece of wire going to the third pin. We have our 10 microfarad capacitor. Being sure to respect the ground side of it, this is audio coming in. So the positive side, without the black stripe, be oriented in this direction. Or if we do it right, we can set it up like that. 
So that one leg, the positive legs go into that wire coming from the potentiometer, the ground legs in this row. Now we can add, and you have to play with this and bend these legs so that they end up where you need them to be. This is pin one of the audio amplifier. Have it plugged in. There's pin one. Use a short piece of wire to go from the negative leg of that 10 microfarad capacitor. Here's the orientation. It's pin one. And this takes care of this entire part of the circuit. We have our audio in going into one side of our potentiometer. The third leg of the potentiometer is connected to ground. The ground to our one quarter stereo jack is in the ground rail. Then the center leg of the potentiometer is going through a 10 microfarad capacitor to pin one. The next is pin two, which will need that 470 microfarad capacitor that's going to be added in the center of this voltage divider we're going to create. So let's get the setup for pin 2. Pin 2 is between, there's pin 1, there's pin 3, so pin 2 is coming out on this rail. So we need a piece of wire. Just added this piece of wire to get it out so we can see it. And then we'll need, there's a piece of wire we just added from pin 2. We'll need that 470 microfarad capacitor with the positive side pointed toward pin 2. And the negative side pointing out toward the other end of the breadboard. 470 microfarad capacitor, positive leg, added to the breadboard, just like that. like that. Now, pin 3 is to ground. So this is pin 3. It's protruding out right here. There's pin 3. We'll connect pin 3 to the ground rail from the back side. pin 3, the center pin connected to the ground rail. Now for the more complex part of the circuit we move to pin 4 and what we need is a piece of wire that extends out that we can tie in our output line eventually to but we need a piece of wire and then our voltage divider that this 470 microfarad capacitor is connected directly in the center of. So we need our 220 ohm resistor, that 2 point, well in, our case, in my case it's 2.5 that goes to ground, and we need enough space to be able to connect that output line. And it's important that you get these, the orientation of these right. That 2.5 needs to be hooked to the ground rail. Right 2.5. And it's going to be hooked to the ground rail through, so that people can see this. through there. Send the same 
row as the negative pin of the 470 microfarad capacitor. That's the bottom half of our voltage divider. And our 220 ohm resistor. It's connected to. They're all in the same row. From the ground to 2.5. You got the 470 microfarad capacitor directly in the middle of them. And then there's the 220 going up. Now we need a piece of wire coming from pin 4 and another piece going off at a right angle. And that's how I've chosen to do it. That pin 4 is going to be behind. Here's pin 1, 3, 5. So pin 4 is in the middle. There's its row. There's the wire. And it connects above or a little higher in the same row that the upper part of the voltage divider terminates. And what we need at this point is just so everyone can see it that this little piece of wire in the diagram is that piece of wire. And so now we need piece of wire going out at a right angle. Like that. And this will eventually go on to our speaker. But we can finish what we need to add hook to the audio amplifier. Before moving on, pin 5 hooks to our power supply for the amplifier itself which is our power rail and then it's decoupled with this 0.2 microfarad or in my case 0.22 microfarad capacitor to ground. Okay. Here's pin 5 that's its rail. We can decouple it first this is a 0.22 microfarad capacitor the ground. That's just from pin 5 to the point 22 microfarad capacitor to the ground rail and then we can add a piece of wire to that same row to the power rail and that takes care of our power supply see, to pin 5. And that enables us to have completed that pin 5 circuitry. All that we have left is to go to continue along this output line from pin 4. The next thing we need is this RC network that will take out any noise transients that are coming out on the output line with a 0.2 microfarad capacitor and a 1 to 1.5 ohm resistor to ground. So here's our output line coming off of pin 4 Point twenty two microfarad capacitor this will decouple the output line and take out noise transients the point twenty two microfarad capacitor the 1.5 ohm resistor to ground takes care of the noise transients to the ground rail. Back to our schematic. Now we need to do this sort of fancy parallel capacitor network, which it's really easy to do. Ultimately, just to get a sense of what it's going to look like, you can think of it like this, that you have a line coming in, and this would make a 0.2 microfarad capacitor, or the equivalent capacitance is to just take two one microfarad capacitors 
hook them in a breadboard like that and then run a line between them. Notice that the signal is passing through the capacitors which means the DC will be blocked and only the AC signal will come out on this line. But this is the same configuration that we're going to do with two 1000 microfarad capacitors on our breadboard. I'm running out of green wire so we'll go to a red wire run it out and we'll need an output wire it'll be about there see there's a row gap between them then we take our 1000 microfarad capacitor noticing the orientation that the positives pointed back toward the amplifier the negatives toward the speaker so there's the negative leg this will be toward the speaker positive will be toward the amp here's the amp take our other 1000 microfarad capacitor not ideal by any means on a breadboard but it works for demonstration purposes and now we have our output line the power line or the positive line for our speaker and given the way I'm using a speaker this would this line will go to out of those parallel 1000 microfarad capacitors to the positive side of our speaker and then the negative side of our speaker will connect into the ground rail on our breadboard. I'm using alligator clips, so I'm just going to put a piece of wire in here. And then we connect our speaker. You can zoom out get a better picture of all of this. Here's the board. Here's the speaker. Speaker. And at this point, all one would have to do is plug in their power supply. Plug in the power supply and then plug in the MP3 player. Plug in our MP3 player and see what this sounds like. Each of the songs that I'll play are royalty free YouTube that you can find them in you in the YouTube creator section of your channel and I've just downloaded them and added them to this music player just for demonstration let's see not the best of songs <laughs> in terms of vibration but the amplifier is clear enough I don't know exactly how it'll sound coming through the speaker on this camera but if you end up with any crackling or static you can adjust this potentiometer and it'll clear out most of it on to the next song Not too bad.
another song. And there's a final song. no distortion with that, which is pretty good. Not bad. One would expect if it was going to distort, it probably would have it that, with that particular Bach song. The one thing to keep in mind with this is that should be enough to give everyone a sense of how this amplifier performs. It's got more wattage capability than like the standard LM386 which makes it nice if you want to run larger speakers than just this little 3 inch you just have to keep in mind that this little chip gets hot it does get it's not hot there it's not very warm it, it is warm but it's not hot at this point just from this little demonstration but you will when you put it on a proto board if you plan on pushing it a lot harder than I was I couldn't turn it but so loud given the speaker it'll start to go beyond the wattage the speaker can handle and it'll distort but once you add it to a proto board you will need some form of heat sink for this I mean you like I said you can make your own however you want to do it but you will need to attach some sort of heat sink to it or either it's going to get just burning hot and you can damage the chip with the excessive heat. But I hope this video has been helpful and I will talk with everyone a little later.